Yes, yes, hello, welcome back. It's your boy, Eduardo Jackson, CEO, thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> CEO, founder, creator of this great Cinema Draft game we all know and love, where daily fancy sports meets the movies, and back at it again. It's your chocolate cardinal, your WBW, your working black writer straight out of the writer's room on the C-dubs Dynasty reboot, it's Kevin Garnett. Hello, 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 good people. Thank yes. you. Yes, and if he shows, he's threatened to pop in his unruly head. Well, I guess you've never <laughs> seen his unruly head. Uh, he pop in his avatar, the Molder right. Young Minds, your cultural misanthrope. It's G-Nice. He shall get no introduction. He gets in. He gets in here. Boo. Uh, boo. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find something to hate, especially about everything that, we, that you love. All right, tonight's <laughs> drinking game. Hmm. Salute. Will be... The word franchise, because tonight's main topic will involve the Marvel movies. And it's one thing Marvel Studios knows, it's how to build and rebuild a franchise. Yes. True story. True story. All right. So let's get into it. <laughs> what I'm watching. Uh, so first show I'm watching, I would say controversial. It's actually, I'm a little shocked I even got sucked into this show. It's a show called Gypsy. It's on Netflix. Ten episodes hour long who's in oddly, that? so naomi watts is the star she plays it's an oddly engaging kind of like psycho domestic drama slightly thriller whatever but this really super messy therapist who involves herself way too much in her patient's lives like to the point of like taking on the fictional identity of of <laughs> uh, someone named diane hart she kind of made up it's like her oh. maiden name mixed with like some fake name, and she plans to be a journalist. And she ends up falling in love with like the girlfriend of a patient. It's like, what are you doing? I mean, and then just like inserting yourself into her patient's lives in really messy oh. ways, and you know, cheating on her husband with some woman, and it's just it's really super messy. And you think on the face of it, eh, it's kind of boring, oh. but it's oddly engaging. And I don't know why oh. I ever doubted it because once I looked in, dug into it. One of the producers behind it is Sean Jablonski, and he's behind Nip Tuck and Satisfaction. And if oh, nice. anyone knows simmering white upper class angst, it's that <laughs> dude. That's the sweet spot. Now, are you familiar with his with his work? I I was a I loved Nip Tuck for the first. However, if it went seven seasons, I watched it for like the first four or five. It went off the rails after season four. <laughs> the the <laughs> whole thing with with uh, Famke, what's her name? Jan, J Jansen, yeah, Famke Jansen. Being like a, a transgendered or like a, whatever she was, like the second he had sex with her, he realized that her she had been constructed down there or whatever. I was like, <laughs> this is, it was a little bit too weird for me. I mean, and the son looked like Michael Jackson. Oh, was the son, a, that was a hot mess. <laughs> I mean, late Michael Jackson, later in life, Michael Jackson. <laughs> but it was, I mean, that was, a, that was a fun show for a few seasons and uh, definitely worth watching. Yeah, and then Satisfaction, which had surprisingly a two season run. I mean, I say surprising because it was so kind of out there that I didn't, I was a little shocked they even brought it back for a second season. And basically, about, you know, wealthy, you know, like hedge fund guy, or whatever, gets bored with his life, finds his wife cheating with like the pool boy or somebody, che cheating on, on somebody, and then he decides he's going to, you know, just become a male escort. Okay, so I'm going to quit <laughs> this high six figure okay. job and become a male escort. All right, whatever. So it sounds bizarre. It is bizarre, but so it's sort of like a rich version of Hung from uh, HBO. Exactly. There you go. Maybe mm -hmm. that's where they got the idea. But you know, but Sean Jablon, like I said, you know, upper class white ennui or whatever. This dude really, mm -hmm. you know, rocks that milieu. He really knows how to how to do his thing out. And the, now, did you, I was I was oddly intrigued. Did you ever watch In Treatment, the uh, HBO show with uh, Gabriel Byrne and a bunch of? I did. Like I, I think I watched. So if it had like three seasons, I might have watched two or uh, or struggled through whatever the, the second or last one was because like the first season it felt kind of cool and fresh. Second season just yeah. felt like a chore, so I kind of tapped it. It was like the fact that it was on five nights a week was like okay, this is a you're asking. That's a commitment. A ton. <laughs> you're asking a ton, and then once you get behind, it was hard to sort of catch up, and that was before really like peak binging TV like it is now. So it was just like I can't watch. I can't. Unless it's Game of Thrones. 20 episodes. Yeah, exactly. And, and the hashtag Dem Thrones, hashtag Thrones, y'all. Right. Woo! Can we talk about that for a second? Can we can we cultural cul de sac? Can we what? ghost ride the cultural whip for a second? Woo. I mean, what are we? We're two weeks out? No! We it like six more sleeps, five more sleeps. It's coming this, this Sunday, Sunday, yo. What? This Sunday. 
Oh, that's yes. right. It's, it's a week before Ballers and Insecure. Yes. Oh, I'm ready. I'm here for it. Yes, my body is ready. Binge second, mode. I'm almost all the way through DVR. binge mode. I'm very excited. I mean, yes, I'm – whoo. I, I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm all speechless. I, I can't wait. I've been listening to Binge Mode. Very excited about that. Been, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I've already rewatched it, you know, to bring someone else along with it. But it's just such a great show. Such a great show. Can't wait. Can't wait. Now they got like all like the, the well, I wouldn't say all, but like a bunch of the book knowledge from Binge Mode behind it too. Uh-huh. Everything matters. Everything. I'll be saying that thing like mm-hmm. SAT. <laughs> and we're gonna be we're gonna be full throttle in here. In a second, because we got the dragons coming to Westeros. Like, yes. oh, oh, yes. them dragons, them dragons. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy. Wait, are you? Guys... Oh my goodness! Guess who bogarted the podcast? Wait, were you just dancing, or was that role play? <laughs> I, 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 was, I was, I was, I was doing, I was doing the the, the key and peel. Them dragons and Khaleesi's. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you, well, if you're on, if you're on, you're not on social media, but on, on Twitter a lot. I, or maybe I'm being retargeted for this, but on Twitter a lot, there's like this Hulu uh, ad that shows like you can now watch live TV on Hulu, including HBO in time for the Game of Thrones premiere, and they do like and they show like that clip from Key and Peele when you know the, the two doormen <laughs> with the Liam Neesons, and they're like the Khaleesi's, them dragons. They show Peele flying around, <laughs> and they show Key <laughs> spreading fire. It's pretty, it's pretty hot. I enjoy it. Anyways, yes. Yeah, welcome well, to the should, podcast. I should probably see it. Wait, uh, we we already started. We're live. Huh? We're we're on the air. Yeah. Yes, that's I love it. I just showed up. No intro necessary. Booyah! We are welcome. Oh, we gave you your intro. Yeah. <laughs> you just weren't here for it. <laughs> this is you might, you this might this actually move to a podcast now and figure out what it was. <laughs> you said what? You might actually have to listen to a podcast now to hear what the intro was. Yeah. Yeah. You're like not happy. Uh, oh, so where are we? Are we doing? Yeah, yeah. Are we doing um, what we watched? Where are we? Yeah, yeah. So we I was just covering this uh, show called Gypsy on Netflix. Kind of weird, white girl. Uh, Wait, I saw the first. Messy. I saw the pilot. Kind of weird, think? right? Uh, I don't know what I think. Here's the thing. There's a it, lot it, it of takes, it takes four episodes before it really kind of hits you. It's a hot take. No, no. But here's the thing. I. That lady, I want to like her. Yeah. Yeah. But have you ever seen anything where you're like, oh, she killed it? Uh, She was okay in Australia, right? Exactly. Okay. So So that's the country or in the movie? (laughs) No, in the movie. (laughs) Oh, She was in there, right? Yeah. I didn't see it. So there's that. And then the other thing is, like, I feel like there's tons and tons of television right now for, like, ambiguous white people problems. (laughs) <laughs> and I feel like this movie falls in there. Like you're upset with having a good home. All right. Well, you're bored. Okay. Is this? I, well, so I didn't it, it is, like it. You mentioned, why don't you mention that because because I was just talking about how Sean Jablonski, one of the producers behind this, uh, is the guy behind Nip Tuck and Satisfaction. And if there's anyone who knows white sim- upper class simmering angst, it's this dude because he that's like his sweet spot. And then also interesting side note is that uh, one of my therapist friends. She was like, "Yeah, it's okay, Did but you, have we seen enough? Therapist? Have we have we seen enough like you know, you know white therapists getting to involve their patients' lives?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Have we?" <laughs> like we said, in treatment felt like eight different TV shows because there was so much of it. Yeah, that's true. yes, but in treatment there was some pretty cool. It was a great show. There was some very good acting going on. Yes, very good acting, very good writing, but a lot of it. You know, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that show should have been about fifteen minutes a piece. But they, uh, <laughs> but what's her name? Got yeah. Uh, that show had a little bit more depth. I mean, that that show was essentially a play. They were like, <laughs> it, was five, play. it was five yeah. plays a week, five plays twisted together with a little bit of soundtrack in the background. There, but this, have you not seen it? Have Kevin? Have you seen it? I have not seen mm-hmm. Gypsy. No, it's. I don't think well, you will see Gypsy either. The way we're talking. Know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not it's, bad. It's, 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 it's just not like I'm not like hell yeah, I can't wait to see it. It I'll gets be honest, better, but it's it's. I mean, you you have to. I mean, you kind of get into it around maybe the fourth episode. I finished it. It's only ten episodes, but man, and it, there's a bit of a cliffhanger. But you're like, really? I kind of felt cheated. Like that was it. So I don't. Know. I'm not sure if I want it to come back for a second season. If, if they do, I'll probably give it half season. It better dazzle me. That's all I gotta say. 
And you said it's a Hulu situation, or it's a Netflix situation? Netflix situation, yeah, Netflix. Uh, and we were also getting ramped up for Game of Thrones. We know you're fairly indifferent. You're the cultural misanthrope. Everyone zigs. I, I'm not indifferent about that show. I think that show's excellent. <laughs> oh, I just, I, I'm just not. I'm not wearing t-shirts like you guys, but I, I, I do. I think it's very good. Dude, John Snow is a John Snow is a G man. That, that's like, <laughs> like I'm gay. Look, I, the, I remember the pilot. I remember the first season, and I, and I remember thinking like, what is heck happening? I remember saying out loud, "There's gonna be like dragons flying around," and then you know what? There were dragons flying around a naked body. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, they've got the whole ice people thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the White Walker. White Not Walkers. last season. The season before last season, this, yes. the, where Jon Snow and them, they're running away and they get on the boats and they float away. On yes, the shore. Hard Home. Holy hard shit, home. that was a cool scene. That scene was yeah. so yeah. goddamn cool. And then, and then, and then the, 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 uh, the Night King, the head of the White Walker, yeah. stunts on them. Like, yes. dude, <laughs> was, that, was just, that was just straight up pimp. Like, they just threw money on top of money and it was totally worth it. He gave you a little doll scene there. <laughs> yeah man and and i mean the thing i'm looking forward to i mean this season it's a truncated season it's only seven episodes i feel somewhat cheated although we are getting supersized episodes in like the last two but this year because they're going towards right, right? yeah well no no, no 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 next next year it's 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 seven it's seasons like year. 15 left or something yeah, seventeen episode. seven episode this year, six episode last year, next year. And but there I mean, not only are we getting supersized episodes, but also it's gonna be like a lot of fighting. It looks like there's gonna be a lot of fighting because oh, yeah. now I mean Khaleesi's got her dragons, she's got her ships, she's and she's in Westeros finally. I mean, shit's about to go down. You know, you heard you heard, you heard um, uh, Cersei in, in like the trailer, and it means to the north of us, and it means to the south of us, and it means to the east of us, and it means to the west of us. Girl is gonna be fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. No, it shows good. That shows straight up good. They they are they are heartless when it comes to killing people. <laughs> oh yeah, but but like once you once you accept that, like like it's shocking that Jon Snow came back, but they had to bring him back because he's a fucking G. But I was, I was shocked. I was shocked when they killed his brother. I was shocked when they well, killed his dad. Fire and ice. This this is song of fire and ice. Yes, sir. That's all you guys uh, said. So they're ahead so of the game, game, right? That's the whole thing. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, but George R. R. Martin still is like very active with. It. Like he wrote an episode, I think, in the last season, and you know, so he's still very involved. But yeah, it's. So I see you're still skateboarding. <laughs> yeah. All right. So our next thing I'm watching is hours. <laughs> So oh, on yeah. stars. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Wait, you know, power, yeah. So it's you two. You guys power. are the two who have who have what is it? Stars, right? You Everyone guys are, you guys are subscribers. Everyone who watches Power loves Power. Pretty much. All four and, of you guys. <laughs> no, oh. it's everywhere. No, they they trend on Saturday nights. That shit airs on Sunday because of the Stars app where they put the the show up like at like midnight <clears throat> on Saturday. That shit starts trending at like nine p.m. on Saturday. Because for example, I was on I was I was on Twitter Saturday night. And all of a sudden, I see like six you know in the U.S. like Proctor. I'm like. Joe Proctor, I mean Jerry Ferrara's character. Like, why is this shit trending? Like, and I didn't want to click on it, and I didn't. And I watched, and you know, I got caught up. But it's like, I mean, this the, the fan, the fandom now is. I wouldn't say it's out of control, but I think it's a little bit no, it's definitely more higher. Out of you know, I mean, people who actually live in the world deal with social media, Greg. That's not you. I'm talking about like real normal people. But normal people who are in social media, I mean, I think it's a little bit. I wouldn't say extra, but I think the hype for Power now has exceeded its actual quality. It's still a really good show, but I just think people are way too hyped for the show. Yeah, I, I don't what pay is, attention what is to it. You know about? It's about a guy who has power. What's it, what's it about? It's a guy with superpowers. In the no, it's not. It's drugs, right? Isn't it drugs? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's Omari Hardwick plays, a, <clears throat> play, plays a, a drug dealer who also runs a club who's trying to go straight and legit. His ex-girlfriend from high school at, turns out to be an AUSA, you know, assistant district attorney or whatever, falls in love with her. She ends up busting him for a crime he didn't commit. So he Wait, are you telling me the whole – is that the whole first season? That's, That's the, whole the whole first, first three four, seasons. Yeah, three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they yeah, now, he's, now he's in jail on trumped up charges. Yeah. Yes. So he's he's guilty of a lot of things, but just not this particular crime that he's in jail for right now. Wait, do you guys? This is like a Mike Tyson situation. Is this? Um, do you guys? Is it good? You it's legitimately enjoy it? Yeah, that's good. It's, it's very good. good. 
Yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed the first three seasons. I just think nothing really has really big has happened yet in the new season for people to be like, oh, my God, I'm so crunk. And, like, they just came in, like, crunk. Like, they just finished watching season three, like, last week, and they came in hot. <laughs> like, okay, let's go. I'm like, yeah, they're, they're going to get there, I'm sure. I'm sure they will. But the, like, the woman who played Little Kim from Notorious plays Harvey. Yes. Wife. Nani, Nani or something like that, right? Not Tori Naughton. Tori Naughton. And so he has this family, but then he also has the – the high school sweetheart, whatever that he's flirting with and has this relationship on the side with. Then you've got his crazy partner, Tommy. Um, <laughs> That's a crazy white boy right there. <laughs> yeah. Who sort of is, he's the, he's sort of the, the sunny Corleone to Amari Hardwick's Michael, if you will. <laughs> yeah. This does sound like the Godfather. Fun fact, that girl, Nori was one That's of the right. three LW girls, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm getting a little tired of making promises, promises that you know that was. <laughs> <your problem. laughs> wow, you came <can't, laughs> off the dome numbers. with that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> but no, man, yeah. just just put a button on this. The fandom is so real that like, the, so Jerry Ferrara was like tweeting on Sunday or something about how he came back from his honeymoon. He's very excited. He's like, yeah, I got a few congratulations, but mostly it was you really need to be focused on getting Ghost out. Ghost is <laughs> Amari Hardwick's uh, street name. <laughs> Is it? Is he married? Is he married to Meadow? Is that gone? That's not. Yeah. Oh no, that's far done. No, he married um his uh podcast producer slash living girlfriend slash I think she's an actress. He met her on Entourage, I think. You know, I was an assistant on the first season of Entourage. Were you really? <laughs> Do tell story time with the WB. Just, just, a, quick. Side note. just, just best a quick. A quick side note. So there was. Can I name? I should. I can name names. So there was yeah. a there was a there was uh, well, there, well no I won't name, 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 there was a, there's a guy who was, who was, uh, who's uh, one of Wahlberg's friends a member of the Funky Bunch I believe he was the DJ and he was they have you know you have like regular casting you have extras casting and yeah. then this guy was in charge of like sort of extra special. Uh, casting, <laughs> so like all of the, you know, you, like Entourage just ran through. There were there would always be models and and uh, you know just attractive women running around in the background, and some would have speaking parts. He had an office in the <laughs> back. He had an office in the back, and he to would audition. audition all these girls. Like every day, there'd be like five to ten, or whenever he was in the office, there'd be wow. at least ten coming through, and he. would Put them on tape or, or audition them, whatever. And <laughs> you put them on tape. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> you put like when you come in for an audition, as you know, you read the lines on tape so that then the higher ups can watch. Sure, the sure, 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 sure. So I, yeah. I'll just say that it was just a, it was a murderer's rug. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the DJ. He was like a real producer or whatever. He's on. Yeah, that, that job sucks. <laughs> <laughs> He was he was turtle with with like a trailer. He All was right. he was yeah, he was essentially the real life turtle. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, okay, the other thing I I was watching I've actually seen this twice in this short <clears throat> over the weekend. How is that? Spider-Man. How is that? St- how how is that King Arthur still alive? I don't understand. It's managed to go through like three months of podcasts. It's the only <laughs> artwork I have. What do you want? No, but you say you even like the movie. I, I liked the I liked it fine. I thought it was underrated. I I enjoyed myself, especially in D box. What are you talking about? You should put a face on poster. poster. Oh, God. We're low budget production here. And it was given to me free. Therefore, it's on the on the board. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I, I work I work facing this way, not that way. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. I'm good. Uh, anyways, uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Damn it! I know you haven't seen it, Greg. I know. I KG hasn't seen it, um, but I saw it twice. I love the hell out of it. It might be, might be the best Marvel movie. I mean, or at least a very close second to like what was that Civil War, or whatever the, the or or it was yeah, Captain America Civil War is pretty good. That was really good. Um, it, this one is just fun. It is. It. I mean, it's fun because it's it's an angle we haven't seen before with with the Marvel movies as far as just like like the the kid brother of the franchise. I mean, he. This yeah. is. This is seen almost entirely through his eyes. He's playing a 15-year-old sophomore. Yeah, Tom Holland's 21, but he looks 15. He actually looks the part. <laughs> I remember a lot of people, myself, someone included, were a little disappointed that Donald Glover didn't get to be cast as, like, you know... A, yeah, there was uh, zero chance that was going to happen. But he's, oh, yeah. in it, right? he's in it, though, right? He's, he's in it. He's in it. He actually, and from going on, like, deep 
you know, background or whatever. I, allegedly, his character turns out to be, you know, I mean, they don't really play into it in, Wait, the, in the movie. But he's, he's, like, he's like the cousin of Miles Morales, who's the, like the new oh. age Spider-Man oh. in, the, in the comics, like, you know, the Dominican kid or whatever. So, yeah, so that's kind of cool. So it's cool that he's in there. But, I mean, mm -hmm. I get what they're going for in the casting. I mean, Tom Holland is perfect. He is such a kid. His American accent is amazing. So, I mean, it's like flawless. I, you buy you buy the entire performance every second. He's just fun. He's like a this kid who has a suit how, who gets to just mess around. And it's, you have so much fun with him. It's great. How much Tony Stark do you get in this? What you percentage get, Tony Stark? You get, you get, you get, I'd say you get about 40% Tony Stark. I mean, he comes, I mean. That's a lot. He, well, a as far as like, well, okay, fine. It's more like thirty to thirty-five, but he because he has Still, like he has Still like he should be like seven percent. No, no, no. But you, he has like a handful of pivotal. I mean, and oh. it may may not be like screen time, but as far as like pivotal, you know, points, like he's hmm. he should be. There, there's a reason why he's a headliner in the talent pool. Like he he's he definitely impacts the story. It's all about like his relationship with the kid when the kids like you know you know um, uh, around him and everything. And it's I don't know, it's just really good. I I mean I love the. The, the actual the kids at the school Zendaya has a has a great little role whatever and there's a twist in the middle you will not see not even you G Nice will <laughs> not see coming falsetto nope you won't see it <laughs> I put money on it you will not see this coming it now, was great my problem with the with the Spider Man movies is Here's the title uh -oh. <laughs> no the, the Spider Boy <laughs> since the, since the beginning the animation since the beginning of the franchise. They uh, have not gotten the animation right with him going through the city. It always seems like a cartoonish. It doesn't seem like a real person. You know what I'm saying? It seems okay. like an animated image. Have they done any? Is it any better than it was in the past? I would. I will say this. I mean, the whole idea of like shooting webs out of your palms and like swing is a, a bit fantastical. I, I get it, <clears throat> but it but they do make it a little more realistic as far as like so you see him the first time you see him outside of like so there's this great intro um, where you see him like with the Avengers and then you get to him like in like Queens and there's a, and you actually see him like change and it's like a real change it's not like a Superman <laughs> change it's like okay I'm putting this on I'm taking this off I'm putting this on okay okay zip it okay and I'm you know it's it it feels a little bit more real you get a little bit of like the the aerial acrobatics. I mean, it's. I don't. I don't know what you're looking for, to be honest. With you. I mean, the, even in the cartoons, it's you're swinging he, off of. He I, wanted, right. I wanted to he seem like he didn't answer the question. Person, like it's a real person. That's all. Uh, no, I, I agree. With you. Although I think I think they did a better job with that on the Andrew Garfield stuff. I didn't think that was. I thought his swinging through the middle was better. But I do. I, I know what you're saying. You know, what was the worst. The worst fighting animation where it just looked like computers took over. Was uh, the Blade movies? You guys remember the Blade movies? Yeah, yeah I remember Blade. Like, yeah, the third one in particular. He just it just looks like a video game console. Third one was pretty bad. Oh yeah, okay. I will say this. I will say this, uh, KG. That mm -hmm. uh, when he when he, the whole scene with like the Washington Monument and stuff, like he's up like really high. He's like, oh my god, and I went up this high. Like you kind of get you know you, you get some like point of view shots like looking down and you know so you know it's better. Oh, okay. Your issue and, there's, is that it looks and there's this whole hard. thing about like torque and like needing enough, you know. I don't know. It's it's really cool. I enjoy the hell out of it. Definitely see it. Definitely see it. Especially I, in like three or and or D box. <laughs> what? I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, it's I'll, good. It's no one Kevin, no, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll really play, good. I mean I I don't really go to the movies at this point in my life, but <laughs> I'll I'll see it <laughs> when it's I'll watch it when it's on something. It's really good. Oh God! You got, now I feel like Spider Man. I've I've got his voice. And it's like, oh come on, you no, guys, I, come I, on! It looks the, the trailer actually looks great. Aside for the sort of aside from the sort of animated swinging around stuff, it looks like a great story. It's fun, so much fun. I promise Tony you. Stark. It seems this is like one of the, the top three Marvel movies like ever. Like seriously, well, we're getting to that later. Don't we are that. getting to that. We are getting to that. Uh, uh, oh my God, you guys. Okay, fine. I give. It I want right. to see the movie. But there's a very small <laughs> chance I'm going to see it soon. Mm, you should see it, though. I mean, really, like, <clears throat> play, play hooky from school one day and just like go see it. It's, it's a lot of fun. You'll enjoy you it. Come in town and then babysit my children, and then I will go. Awesome, hook it up. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. Hold me to that. Hold me to that. Now, never get this, out of Vegas. <laughs> before we switch to the next segment, yes. Is anyone watching the Defiant Ones? Wait, did I get yes. to go? 
Well, I mean, well, now is the part where I say, fellas, what are you watching? Uh, so, okay, yes. go. All right, Kevin, you go. I don't know. Is anyone watching the Defiant ones? Can we? I am, yes, I am. I enjoy it. I didn't yes. see tonight, but I've seen the the first two. I've I've seen the first one and a half. Greg, are you are you, Miss G Nice? I mean, are you up on? <laughs> I I I have not seen it, but I want to see it. It's super. I've heard it's very very cool. It's like a one review that I read said that it was sort of too long and too detailed. But to me, like it's sort of like a love letter to yeah, to love letter to producers. Because I didn't My, know yes. Iveen's. That's uh, exactly what it is. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't understand. I didn't know uh, Iveen's producing background from Springsteen, John Lennon, Stevie Nicks. Stevie Nicks, yeah. Tom Petty, like so, it's pretty. So impressive. you remember Steve? Stevie uh, Ed play ball with us. Uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. But go ahead. Whatever. Stevie's a big music head, Kevin, and he swears this thing is the greatest thing in the world. He was like, it was so cool. He's like all these bands, like you said. He said all these bands. I didn't know he did half of them. All these details, and he's like, and they keep bouncing back and forth between all of them. It's pretty. He said he hasn't finished. Have you gotten to Gwen Stefani yet? No, no. I think that might be tonight, maybe. Yeah, I want to see it. It's it's really good. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I like it. I mean, it's it's yeah yeah. I have it on when I'm like doing stuff, but it's it's it, it's 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 like a oral history. Of not only just like you know two men's lives like Dr. Dre and then also you know Jimmy Iovine, but also of like the music industry like as a business from like mm -hmm. you know because Iovine started even earlier than Dre and it's like you right. know and then and I guess eventually we'll get to their two paths like actually crossing. But right, it, it I guess the uh, the whole Napster thing is a big part of it in them sort of realizing oh. that the business is changing and that they needed to pivot to beats and whatever else they've got going on the side. So <laughs> that beats thing. The whole thing about beats is hilarious. It's like how Tyrese <laughs> and them nearly fucked it up because they got drunk <laughs> in the studio. It was like talking about that shit on Facebook too early. <laughs> it's a it's a great like the that's that's just in the intro, G Nice. Yeah. Like the first ten minutes they talk about that, then they sort of rewind back to the beginning. But it's it's very well done. This is I'm not sure which one is which, but I think this is Alan Hughes and not Albert Hughes. Right. They've, yeah. They've right. veered off in different paths, or aren't they mad at each other or something? I don't know what's going on, but it's just Alan Hughes, and it's great. It's it's great. <clears throat> yeah. The the whole production, like you know, is is really good. All right. So, what else are you guys watching? Anything else? I'm looking forward to uh, Friends from College on Netflix. The, are you? Uh, I am actually. It looked funny. I like that guy from the show Married. And I I like what's his face P uh, uh, Key or whatever his name is yeah that's that's Key <laughs> and key the woman the, one of the women was in something that I like it, it looked funnyish it did look funny it, I was excited I was interested and then I saw an extended trailer and I was like oh yeah I saw the extended trailer too and I kind of had the same reaction but I mean it, it's Netflix I'm I'm roll with it I mean they're I mean they usually don't let me down <coughs> Iron Fist. But uh, yeah, so. <laughs> oh my God! Should we talk about that? No, because <laughs> no. we, cause we haven't finished it. I finished. I finished. I finished. Yeah. Is it um, is it worth me watching the last two and a half episodes? It is. It is. It is, it is. It is weirdly bad. Like I'm surprised. Like <laughs> it's not good. So are it's you going to watch the Defenders? Yeah. I mean, do clearly, I need I to watch the last two and a half episodes to watch the Defenders? No, you know what happens. He saves the day. Oh, okay. All right, then I'm good. No, we can look at He saves the day and gets the girl. Oh, he's, I just, I he's just no more likable in the first episode than he is the last episode. Sweet. I just heard today Lucy Liu is directing the first episode of season two of Marvel's Luke Cage. Huh. Okay. Is she going to be in it? I don't think she's going to be in it. I think she's just directing it, which should be interesting. Because apparently she's directed that show she's on elementary and like a few yeah. other TV shows. So I liked elementary. I couldn't keep up with it. It's just, but I did. Yeah, I, did I mean, it, it's procedural. Out. You're not really missing much, but I mean, for right. a case show, it's really, it's pretty good. I, I enjoy it. Have they hooked uh, up yet? They're, they're never going to hook up. Just, oh. and, you know, no, and the funny thing is I remember reading it like before its first episode, like in the, the like weekly like spread, like the, the producer was, was giving an interview. He's like, look, they are never going to get together. I promise you they're never going to get together. I was like, they never say, I mean, you know, what if you guys run like five or six seasons? They've now run five or six seasons. They're never going to get together. Trust me. <laughs> That's stupid. That's great. I like it. <clears throat>
uh, platonic adult, you know, male female friends. Imagine that. Uh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to I wanna give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Playing House. It's a very innocuous, charming, adorable little show. They they did they recently dropped their third season. Oddly, like you can binge all eight on demand. Uh, it's from USA Channel, or you can I guess watch the last. Uh, they they put like two on at a time. They're half hour each, but it's just so charming. It's really charming, and I hate that that it's just like inherently like sweet and nice and very charming. It uh, stars Lennon Parham, uh, and if like if you've seen these ladies, you'd know who they were. And then Jessica St. Clair, they're real, best friends in real life, best friends mm. in the show, and it's just such a cute little show. Key. And the reason why I thought about it is because uh, Keegan Peel, Keegan Michael Key is on there, so. Yeah, it's mm. it's just a cute show. It's really cute. The old, the old words, girlfriends, totes yeah. cool. All sorts. It's just really adorable. So playing house, big ups. Okay. All right. Can I go? My turn. My turn. My turn. Oh, I I thought you. Okay. Uh, I will be very fast. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. One. I just want to make a shot. I spent a little time not watching, but listening to the first couple albums of Chance before Chance did Coloring Book. He's really super talented. That dude is super talented. Yes, yes, yes. It's really, even a social experiment. It's really cool. I mean, there's a lot of like young, like he's, not, he's sort of annoying. He's got some stuff that's sort of sloppy, but it's like you can tell when he got to a coloring book, it was like he had honed it to like this perfect moment. But there's such cool stuff going on in all his mixtapes. All of them. All of them. Great. Uh, 10 day, obviously, very sophomoric and and simple but stuff like uh what's the name of that song brain something something <laughs> anyway he's got and a I couple of little gems that he, that, that he that he reps the shy right i mean he reps the shy probably harder than anyone out there right now he does school. it also he keeps yeah he's he does he that he a million dollars to, to chicago public schools i mean he seems but man. he also seems like he just seems like bright like bright and talented, and he seems like he knows he's creating cool ass stuff. I saw him wild it out last week. <laughs> Have you ever seen him without a hat? <laughs> a hat that's too small for his head. There's a reason you never see him without a hat. The song I first forgot was called "Brain Cells," which is great, off the first album. About oh, ten uh, days. And then yeah, and then acid rap, front to back, pretty much great and then yeah it's good book. it's so, good i mean coloring your book is clearly like the best because it's just all fit together did you have you did you hear the social experiment the, yeah, the one album yeah. you put out that's also that, very he's good got a, uh there's a video for <clears throat> sunday candy, sunday candy. I think, which is interesting very sort of high school musically kind yeah of but i don't think that was their official video i think that was them some anyway anyway so i've been doing that too uh i binge watched and I hate myself for it, but I binge watch because I'm so fucking tired. Um, House of Pain. Nope, House of Cards. All five seasons? No, no, whatever the most recent season was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Season. yeah. yeah that's good stuff. How, are you up to date on it, KG? I am not. I watched the first season, maybe yeah, into the second one, and then I tapped out. I was like, this is, I get it. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and speak with you know, speak with the yeah, community. Yeah, spoil all the way. Spoil yeah, away. I'm not gonna spoil. It. I just I, it was fun. No, it was, it was this, look, this is what I felt like. I felt like last season was sloppy, and I felt like this season was them trying to put together last season, trying to like salvage it, <laughs> put it back in order, and they like took a funky train and managed to duct tape it back on the tracks. And that's, I just felt like true. I think the, maybe the third season might have been one of the best or whatever, but last season was was kind of weird. This season is better. Like I like I, better, I'm, but they had to, I'm they ready had to, for what's next. Though. I'm so ready for. Well, but this is the part that I don't understand, and this is the part that I thought was. And again, again, Kevin, this this is going to spoil it. So are you okay with that? Go ahead. I'm never going to watch the show. At some point, when he becomes president, <laughs> you know, at some point he's in president, you know, there's nowhere else to go. So I know they sat around in a room where it was like, "What's next? What's next? What's next?" And that's what they did. They gave her president, and he's going to step up to the next level. But the truth is, whatever they come up with, is still not going to be as good as the president. <laughs> so basically, they've they reached their ceiling, right? <clears throat> yeah, it's, 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 like, it's like if, if Julia Louise Dreyfus's uh, Veep actually became president, like for good, like then the show's over. <laughs> I, well, right. I I think you can get away with a, a year of that, but they're like uh, like this was it was weird to me that they spent all this time on the election, and then they turned around, and then he was like, I am going to step out of the way because I can, and you know what I mean? It's just like I don't know. It just that was I didn't dislike it. <laughs> Again, I feel like this is he's they were cleaning up last year. 
So she's the president now? Yes, and I'm, I mean, like, uh, it's on a temporary basis, kind of, but I, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. Sweet. She's uh, not temporary. Sweet. These are not nice people. <laughs> they and kill then, people. <laughs> yeah, and then you get, and then you get confused. This is one of those moments, because it's like a little Walter White-ish. You get confused whether or not you want them to succeed. Half the time, you're like, ah, I'm not sure what's supposed to happen. Do I, how do I feel? That, sure that's House of Cards and politics in a nutshell. I mean, like, seriously. <laughs> I guess. Mm. Well, like, I like, still oh, think I, Death, Doug continues to be the best character. Doug's okay, the, oh, yeah. He's the MVP. And the last thing I watched, which was I saw, I actually, we had randomly had a day off, so my wife and I went to the movies, and I saw Wonder Woman. Yeah, what did you think of that? It was excellent. <gasps> that was a fucking the E word. What? That was, a, that, was a, just, <laughs> that was just sort of fantastic. I was so shocked how wonderful that movie was. And it like three, four, it was like one scene, and I don't, I don't, I keep falling. It's the one scene where she's like talking to him and they're outside and they just like defeated the people in this tiny village. Yeah. And they have this they like that sweet picture. Yeah. scene. But it wasn't cheese ball. It was totally taken seriously. And I remember thinking in this moment, being like, oh shit, this is a real movie. It was really, <laughs> really good. Like it was, oh, it was funny and charming and funny and the, 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 the fight scenes were cool and she wasn't cheesy or over the top and she's super hot. Oh God! So, yeah, you know. make perfection. Yes, I love but it. But I thought that was a great movie. I, like, I was shocked how good that was. But let me ask you this, and Kevin, have you seen this? I have not seen it, but but go right ahead. Yeah. Oh. So Oops. so my whole thing is so, and we debated this or kind of talked about this or whatever on the podcast. Maybe not this podcast, but like on the recaps, whatever. So her whole thing about how love is like the thing worth fighting for, whatever. My only quibble, and I thought the movie was was generally excellent too. I saw it twice in like three days from I really enjoyed it. My thing is that she could have just been like really good friends <clears throat> with Chris, you know, Chris Pine. And I would have bought that more than this kind of shoehorned in love story, which I mean, that is the only thing I kind of felt a little bit out of place. Sure. Like, I understand why they did like, you see how the sausage is made. I just didn't think they, I don't, I don't think they needed it quite honestly. I don't think they needed it. And well, that's part of their or origin. Look, they, once they got past her origin, what the, her origin is so there's like 55 versions of it. It's so <laughs> convoluted. It's so confusing. And they were just like spit something out super quick. You're like, ah, all right, cool. Like the fact that they got through that part, the rest of it was whatever. He is part of her origin story. Oh, really? Steve, Steve Trevor? Trevor that, is that his name? Steve Trevor in the yeah, yeah. Sort of. <laughs> okay. And you like, two first names. <laughs> they had to. They sort of had to do that. Like I didn't mind. I thought you know, I thought it. I thought their flirting was very actually very sweet and sort of charming. And it wasn't over the top to me. I didn't feel like it. I mean, I guess at the end, so her sort of like, I am not war kind of thing. Yeah, but. yeah. That, that's all I'm saying. Otherwise, I mean, no, I really enjoyed it. I, I, I thought it was great. I think I gave it four reels, whatever. I just thought they didn't need, you know, the love story. But if that's part of an origin story, it is what it is. I will they say this. Need, they didn't need, they didn't need the, 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 my biggest thing was what I thought before I went in. I still don't, they, well, I don't know why it had to be a period piece. That's still, still silly to me. <laughs> It's still so silly. Said that. I actually don't mind it because we don't see enough period piece about World War One. We just don't. Really? I feel like we do. And why do you have, like? Why can't you put her in regular time? Well, they started her out there, but we had to see why she's like immortal or whatever. She's descended from Zeus from this crazy Mescal Isle. Yeah, blah blah. Yeah. I mean, it was fine. They did a good job. I just I, that was that was like a layer that you could have gotten without. And real quick, uh, or, as far as origin stories go with Spider-Man Homecoming, I really like what they did with this one because they basically had no origin story. They just dropped you right in the middle of it. Boom. <laughs> From like Avengers. Or what was, it, what was the one where they had that fight in Berlin? Maybe it was Captain Civil America. War. Civil War, yeah. They, they basically drop you right into that. Boom. Like, that's it. Some backstory which sets up the villain, which is actually really cool and believable. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah, we're good. <laughs> so I, I appreciated that. I appreciate that. Okay, so you know, like, yeah, I'll just put by a spider. It is what it is. I'm like, oh, okay, pretty cool. Um, all right, so and of course, right when I need it, I can't find my soundboard. So yay, <laughs> uh, we're just gonna <laughs> clap for ourselves. Yeah, go G nice. Go G nice. Good job, G nice. <laughs> yeah, so you go G nice. All right, so this week's episode is about top three. Marvel movies. And the reason why we're doing Marvel movies oh, is really? because <laughs> I really enjoyed like Spider-Man coming. It was just that damn good. So, basically, you guys know how the game is played. Name a Marvel Studios slash Marvel Comics-based movie. So this includes the X-Men. Doesn't have to be, you know, current Marvel Cinematic Universe or whatever. Are there even enough to have this? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, over the, I mean, there's a ton. There's a ton. Yeah. Yeah, there's I mean, ton. Yeah, like there's a ton of bad there. ones. I mean, if you pick Fantastic Four, I might have to excommunicate you from the pod. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of excellent movies. Excellent movie. That was excellent. It's just misunderstood. <laughs> yes, all versions. That, that was that was awful. Uh, so basically, each one of us will pick a Marvel movie. Once you make that pick, it is out of play. We alternate picks. Um, and yeah, I said we we're gonna flip for first, but since G Nice is late, you have to wait. Go ahead, KG. You That's get fine. First. Hello. Uh, I, I'm going to go with my number one. My first pick will be Iron Man. The original oh, Iron right. Man with yeah. oh, uh, God. Robert Downey Jr. That's Jr. probably the best pick to make. Yeah, that's and uh, uh, what's his place? John Favreau directed. Fun. Had a little bit of a darker uh, side to it. This was when around the time when The Dark Knight was coming out and sort of superhero movies were being rebranded as these more grounded things as opposed to like the old Batmans and these sort of farcical things that we'd seen before. Very realistic, set the tone. Also the, the humor in it, I think, helped set the tone for the whole new trend of uh, superhero movies and this great. was a, this was the original. This was the one that set off the whole like expanded comic universe thing. This is, it was Iron Man, which is yeah. Which, which you can think might be a risky you know, bet. To, okay, we're going to kick off this whole like master plan off this yep. somewhat obscure comic that never really right. got the love like Superman or Batman, but it really worked. And Robert Downey Jr., that's why he gets paid like 50 mils to show up in the Avengers and shit because right. he earned that shit. He built this shit. He did. He absolutely did. Wow. This, this is – I'm surprised you picked this, Kevin, because it's, it's the correct answer. This uh, <laughs> thank you. I have to thank you. <laughs> this this is actually me, the the perfect superhero movie. I think you guys heard me say this before, but yeah. it's absolutely the perfect. It's not that it's like fun. There's a bunch of explosion. He gets the girl. He gets to say cool lines, and it's like an hour and forty minutes. It's the perfect <laughs> popcorn movie. There's not that much plot. Mm. This movie was excellent, and it wasn't that much of a risk because Iron Man's like a B character. He was. Now they've sort of pushed him up, but he wasn't the big three. And mm -hmm. now, they, you know, it was like you could take a risk because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't this huge, huge thing. And well, yeah, but I was saying, uh, like, like it's a bit of a risk if you have this big master plan like Kevin Feige, the executive producer over at uh, uh, Marvel Studios, had. If it flopped, you were kind of fucked for, like, your next five yeah. movies. But it was kind of like, so it kinda like uh, Warner Brothers is with this dark universe thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yes. <laughs> yes, they might be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good. Good answer. So there I'll go. go next since <laughs> G Nice has to wait. And my pick will be Iron Man 3. Because, three. Yes, my Iron Man 3 was outstanding. Because, first of all, so it involved a lot of things. All right. This, this mm -hmm. is why this is also the correct pick at. It's at number two, whatever, because not only is it, you know, the, the guy who built this shit, blah, blah, whatever. Iron Man 2 was weird. You had the whole, you know, uh, re recasting of Rhodey and stuff and, and mm -hmm. Iron Horse or Machine or whatever the hell they call himself. That was all kind of weird. This one had Shane Black <clears throat> directing it. You could tell it had more of a, uh, of a joie de vivre. They're trying something different. They made, they, f they finally started seeing consequences for why, you know, for, for the actions sure. of what he does. I mean, people, like, you know, so, you know, allegedly, you know, he pissed off some terrorists, terrorists blows up his house, he's having panic attacks. I mean, what's, mm -hmm. I mean, when was the last time we saw a superhero that vulnerable, like, like, like legit? Like, he can't perform and function. What, can I get to, damn, I can't get to any, like, real, like, uh, shot shots. But anyways, he can't, like, really function because he's having these panic attacks, and it's, it's interfering with his work. So whereas mm -hmm. I thought they kind of, they didn't, like, go off the rails with Iron Man 2, it was just, a little too extra. This felt like, well, the, the tech in this is extra because he's got like now all these extra iron bots or whatever that help mm -hmm. with this shit. It's really cool. It's a really yeah. cool idea. And, and now that we're in the age of like AI and automation stuff, you could kind of conceivably think that Elon Musk might be you know working on some shit. You know, you never know. Yeah. yeah. So I just I just really bought it. I enjoyed it. Uh, a super vulnerable superhero is exactly what this franchise drink needed. Yay. Yeah, I thought this was okay. This is the one I I, no, I'm saying <laughs> Iron Man one was like perfect, and this one was louder and bigger, and it was not as good. Yeah. It's still good. I bet you, I bet you don't even remember Iron Man three correctly, do you? You're saying that to be misanthropic. This is the one with the little kid, right? Where he's yes. This with was the kid, a very good. 
Yeah, Ben Kingsley yeah. with the stage performance as a villain and stuff. That was great. That was and awesome. What's your face? Uh, oh yeah, that was he was the fake uh, sort of Ben Ladenish character. Yes, and then, and then Pepper gets in the game. Like she gets into yeah, a Pepper. Stuff she gets, yeah, yeah. Right, that's, this is a yeah. quality movie, guys. It's a good movie. It's a fine movie. Yeah, it is. It's a fine movie. It's still the wrong answer, but it's a fine movie. <laughs> it's a fine movie. It's look. You're making a distinction. I will watch like, Iron Man one multiple times. I don't need to see Iron Man three ever again. I didn't okay. dislike it. I didn't dislike it. It just, you know, it is what it is. All right, quit stalling. What's your what's your first <laughs> pick? Um, all right, since we're going front to back, I really, really enjoyed um, the not the second one, the not the first one, the Incredible Hulk. Oh, so is this the, the Banner one this? or the second one? The, not the, the Ed Norton. The Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Ed Norton. Yeah, I like that one. Yes. Hulk. Yeah. They, they, Hulk. It's sort of a cheat Hulk. because. That's because a great pick. Like, no, that's that's that's, that's a great thank you. Okay, of course it is. But here's the, that's <laughs> here's the thing. They they don't make that face, Kevin. They um <laughs> they basically they were like, we made a mistake. We're gonna steer clear of all that. And what was great about this is they kept it so simple. He loses his anger. Guys trying to keep from getting upset. And then there's a little bits of story that I don't really remember nor care. And then he had some cool action sequences. <laughs> and it was good. Like that is exactly what the Hulk should be. You don't have to tie it down with anything. There was the scene where he got to follow the show he loved. He had a soft side, and the girl loved him, and he protected her. It was very simple. It was very clean. Start off in, like, perfect. Brazil in the favelas or something? Yeah, it moves, it moves, it moves. There's a bunch of explosions, and it moves. Like, it was – that's – again, it was – these are what superhero movies should be. We don't have to overthink it. We don't have to, like, oh, I mean, do you really care about their love interests? Not so nah, much. Not really. Right, so you just – and here it is. And he turns green and throws stuff and gets angry. And this <laughs> – this, this, um, this, the facial stuff in this one compared to the first one was much more realistic. It was still crazy. It still looked like a computer, obviously. But and I don't even love Ed Norton, but I thought he did a good job in this. Yeah, well, so and so, and so the, there's a re so you know why Ed Norton never starred in the Incredible Hulk again, right? Why is that? He's difficult. He's just be difficult. He He's difficult, and rumor has it, like on most of his films, he took over the editing bay and got had like recut and did all sorts of, you know, Ed Norton type shit. So otherwise, I mean, because you know, I guess Marvel had an idea what it wanted to be. He had, I guess, more artistic idea what it, what he wanted to be. They fought or clashed with, or like it got got to the point like he wouldn't. I mean, I don't think he didn't promote the movie, but like he didn't promote it as much or something. Like there was some bad blood there, mm -hmm. and so that's kind of why they had to like. Because this was supposed to be like once again start of a franchise. They tried it in, in drink. They tried it in two thousand three with Eric Eric Bana's one, which was a hot mess, even though it was directed by Ang Lee. And then they waited five years, and here comes this one, <clears throat> and it's got all the requisite elements, and it just and it did okay at the box office. It wasn't terrible, but they just didn't want to work with Ed Norton again. So American History X is the worst thing that happened to him as far as uh, <laughs> his ego, and uh, no, because that's right. where he started to. He they had a problem with the director, I believe, and he ended up taking over. Yeah, the editing. What he does, and, and the movie turned out to be. It was entertaining. I enjoy the movie. It's good, but I think it sort of blew up his ego, and and now he. I, I didn't realize that he was going into the edits on all these other movies now. That's like his mo, I guess. <clears throat> so yeah, so so good pick, G nice, you know, respect, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's so begrudging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what, what do you got? We got KG. I, I again, this uh, wait, isn't this isn't this isn't this Ed? Isn't it your snake? turn? No, no, we're not doing snake. We're doing no. you know, just regular back to the top, man. Yeah, you said you just went last because you're late. Yeah, uh, no, I know, but I thought you went first. Okay, my bad, my bad. I'm going to go. With... I'm gonna guess what you're gonna go. Can I guess? No, I'm gonna go with the Avengers. Damn it! Damn. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Again, okay. again, you know, same, same, same kind of thing as far as uh, going with the first Iron Man. First time you've got all these guys together, you sort of set them up in their separate universes. It could have been potentially hard to juggle all of them, but I believe Josh Whedon uh, wrote and directed this. Did a great job of sort of keeping the ball bouncing between them. It was very. It could have been heavy was very fun, very funny. Uh, you had What's-His-Face as the Hulk this time. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, what's Mark Ruffalo. Name? There we go. Ruffalo. Oh, uh, it's uh, Black Widow. Yes. Even though Black Widow and Hawkeye, I still feel are kind of real in a realistic world are kind of useless when you've got these other powers. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. 
Well, so that's that 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 nice. Is that comic book heresy, G nice? Uh, he's right. I mean, it's true. They, there's <laughs> there's really no place for them. If goblins are coming down, the arrow is not going to hurt them. Right. <laughs> but it, it was it was fun because this was the first time we really saw like Hulk versus Thor and like Captain America versus Iron Man. All these like sort of interpersonal dynamics and the physical fights between these characters uh, on screen. It was just great fun and and perfectly executed. Yeah. All right. Uh, I I thought that movie was incredibly hyped up, and when I saw it, I thought it was good. You wanted more Hawkeye? No, I, I thought it was a little. <laughs> I wanted more. You would want. You would want more Hawkeye. Those heroes need to be better. <laughs> I thought it was okay. I don't know. Nah, I, I can cry. I really enjoyed it. It's it's great. It's this type of movie. I mean, Bill Simmons is famous for saying this. Like, oh, it's type of movie where you know, if it's twenty minutes in, you just got to stumble on it. You're kind of stuck there for the next two hours. Like, I, I really enjoy this movie. I do watch it periodically. It's 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 really good shit. Um, I'm going to. <laughs> I would I would like to make a honorable mention in advance for. <laughs> For a uh, freaking uh, uh, Black Panther, I just yes. have a feeling it's going to be great. Absolutely. I feel like <laughs> but... Black, I was almost going to say Black <laughs> Panther as one of my three because it, that, that's going to just be... Just off the trailer. Off the trailer alone, it's fine. Off the right? trailer, it's better than half of these Marvel movies. <laughs> I mean... Uh, but yeah. no, I'm not gonna do that. I can waste my pick on that. <clears throat> um, actually, and, and this this is sad because the, the, we're, we seem to be hewing to the. Well, actually, no. I guess Incredible Hulk was outside the current Marvel. That is correct. Yeah, but you were, what you were about to say is correct. Is what you guys are doing. <clears throat> but <laughs> but oh man, I mean, there, there's some really good ones in this current universe, though. I'm gonna say. Uh, 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 God, it's like killing your babies. Uh, I, I really enjoy, I, I mean, am, am I wrong for really enjoying Captain America Civil War? No. no I mean, I'm that's kidding. that's an excellent movie. I mean, it's, for me, it's between that and even Winter Soldier. I thought it had a really crazy good vibe that was not expected. Because the first Captain America was like, Greg's favorite, a period piece. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Orton Story got that out of the way, whatever. I can't say I was incredibly hyped for Winter Soldier. Then I saw Winter Soldier, I'm like, this is badass. I think I saw it twice in the theater. You know, Civil War, I might have seen three times in the theater. I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. It's fun. It brings all it brings them all together. There's like mm. real legit beef that fractures the team. I mean, we get to see Black Panther. Fuck. I yeah. mean, that was I mean, damn. Damn, and his and his king's guard or whatever. Shit, that was lit. I mean, it's, it's it gives you everything you want in a Marvel movie generally, and it with with a bit of story and, and it incorporates all the new newbies. Even Ant Man had a little bit of a role and stuff. We, we get our tease of Spider Man, which actually plays into the new Spider Man Homecoming movie. It's just it's just badass. I really enjoy yeah. Captain America: Civil War. The no, thing, I, no, the, I make no apologies for it. No apologies. The great thing about Civil War is that it's not really a Captain America movie. It's a it's an Avengers movie. Exactly, and yeah. and like a get, yeah, you get plenty of everybody. It's not just like, it's not even just like a cameo by um, Black Panther. Like he has like a legitimate, a legitimate space in there, and you like kind of again did a great job of balancing all of these different characters. The Spider Man intro was great. Like his, yeah. you know that like you said, <laughs> it, it did a great job of setting him up. Not that. Spider-Man movies don't always make hundreds of millions of dollars, but like, it did a great job. I, I, it was on my list definitely as one of their top tier movies. And you know what? I was, I was gonna force myself to watch some like Netflix series, Medici, starring like the guy who played Rob Stark. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna watch this tonight. I'm gonna watch <laughs> me some Captain America: Civil War. I'm, I mean, I'm. Oh man, I missed this. This is good. This is good stuff. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, right, so Civil War. Civil War, so here's the thing. Civil War is based on a really, 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 really good book. And okay. the guy, this is Wesden, right? He does this too? Who? This is also Joss Wesden? Whedon? Oh, Joss Whedon. Whedon? No, this is, um, no. This, this, this is the, uh, the Russo. Russo. Anthony yeah. and somebody Russo. Joe so they, and Anthony they, Russo. They, they, they are pretty faithful, not to the story, it's to the con they're faithful to the concept. The details are different. But mm -hmm. they... Um, so way, way back when, a very long time ago, this would have been like, this would have been like a fanboy's wet dream. Never in a million years. Same thing with the Justice League coming out. Never in a million years did I actually expect to see these huge icons put into a movie, like real money, and people are going to see these movies. 
And that's what that's yeah. what um, Civil War was because they did and they did it nicely. It was very smart, really well set up. Everything was like grounded. It wasn't over the top. It was like good inner beefs. They wouldn't. Their fights between them didn't feel manufactured. It didn't feel like it was just right. You have to make them fight each other. I mean, this is literally a fanboy's wet dream. This is the moment where you're like, why would Captain America fight Iron Man? Let's have that movie. And it's here. <laughs> and they did a really good job with it. This was like not a disappointing movie. That's what's really cool about it. Yeah. And it and, made $1.15 billion worldwide. I mean, it was good. <laughs> it delivered on a billion off, off a quarter billion dollar movie budget. And actually, not, not to call back to what we did earlier today, but I did a podcast earlier today. All right, I guess you guys will hear this tomorrow. <clears throat> I did a podcast yesterday or earlier Tuesday where I discussed like, the, the economics behind uh, the movie industry as far as like what makes a movie profitable. And so we kind of figured out that, it, that for a production budget, of a movie, it takes 2.78 times the production budget of a movie in order for it to recoup all of its expenses. So on 250 million, it would have taken 695 million dollars for it to make a profit. Obviously, it you know did more than that, made a goddamn almost like 700 thousand in profit, whatever 700 million, sorry, in profit. But generally, it you know the higher the budget, the higher the risk is to get your money back. So, you know, it didn't, so it's just a testament to not only how good that movie was, but how much, like you said, the fanboys were really waiting to see all that in one movie because they came out and they came out worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think the great thing, um, Downey Jr. So charismatic, like anything that he's in as Iron Man, I think it, it crosses over beyond the fanboys now. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, regular movie fans are, are hyped about these things. People that have never picked up a comic book in their life are still excited to see the whole Marvel <laughs> universe expanded. And they pretty much have not, I don't want to say they, I mean, they pretty much haven't disappointed uh, since they've come out with this Iron Man, uh, the first one. Oh, that's not true. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, did, I wasn't a huge fan of like Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, but they're off in their own little thing. They haven't really kind of right. come to the main yet. So, but yeah, but people hard. people are super like the the Galaxy Guardians of the Galaxy fans are super excited about that stuff. Yes, they like, are, they, <laughs> and it's making a grip of cash. Okay, my turn. So, listen, because you, yeah. you already you, you you talked on it a little bit. The I'm not going to do this one because you just you basically spoiled it by saying yourself. But I thought. The Switcher Soldier was also very fucking good. And yes. that is also based on a really good book. And the original Captain America was kind of boring. And you kind of, <laughs> I also, it's high, look, it's hard to sell him in that costume. It's just somewhere Wait, along the way. Just the, the, America, the Captain America costume itself, especially in that oh, first okay, the costume, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's hard, at, like, somewhere along the way, when they started realizing they were going to make movies, they sort of changed this costume to make it look like a, a World War II, a World War II um, foot soldier kind of look. Oh, but yeah. it's a hard sell to walk around with. It just looks cheeseball. <laughs> look how much cooler Winter Soldier looks. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So it's a really hard sell. And in the first one, it was just like cheeseball central. It was just like whatever. But they took a really good storyline and they made Winter Soldier 2. Kind of awesome. I would actually debate that this might be better than three, but they're both no, really no, good. And honestly, that that's a fair debate. Like I'm, I was torn. Like I, it, there's, I mean, I wouldn't hate on you for a change uh, if you thought Winter Soldier no. Civil War because to me it's like one a and one A. It's like you know splitting frog hairs to me. They're they're both really really good. And Winter Soldiers kind of gave that whole paranoid vibe. <clears throat> you know the oh can't mm -hmm. trust anyone, can't trust government, can't you even trust you know Nick Cage. I don't know or. or yeah, is it? Yeah, it's the name, the cage, right? Um, you know, I, yeah, I, he is actually one of the weakest links of the whole franchise. Well, now, because I, mean, I mean, he look, Sam did his job. Like when this thing had no profile, when there was no universe, he came in at the end of the credits, came in looking cool, all his Samness. It's like I'm setting shit up for Dude, you. He just looked like Shaq, like a Shaq well, like with an eye patch. Well, <laughs> well, it's and he his his high water mark came in like the first Avengers, and after that, we're kind of like, okay, we're we're kind of good. I mean, Sam, mm -hmm. you're right. Now Sam is like the weakest link, but he doesn't need, he doesn't need to carry the heavy lifting anymore. They've got like Downey and everyone else to do it now. And now Spider-Man, God damn it. Spider-Man is, oh yeah, I, ooh man, so excited. Love Spider-Man. Um, I was in traffic the other day and a dude on a motorcycle whizzed by and he had his, his backpack was like the Captain America shield. <laughs> it was, it was awesome. kind of cool. 
Yeah. I've actually looked at purchasing that backpack. Okay, so um, <laughs> there, there, I am not joking at all. I so my, my, choice, my choice is actually uh, the original Thor. What, uh, are, you, are you just jumping ahead to your third choice? No, no, he's no, second. no he, he's he's second. He, he gave the Winter Soldier as an honorable mention, kind of. Because he had already talked about it, essentially. On your number two pick, you give it, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm saying, I'll make it very quick. I thought Thor is not my favorite character. But I thought Thor was one of the first times. This is I I think I've said this to you guys before. One of my issues with with superhero movies is you they are perfect on the page because you're penciling them. So they're proportionately like the strongest looking people in the world. They're like physically, they look badass and cool. And it's really hard to translate that to a real person. Because nobody's body is like that. No one looks <laughs> like that person. Those are like not real people. So like why the Incredible Hulk? They couldn't do Incredible Hulk for a really long time because they have the technology. Well, yeah, Lou Ferrigno, but go ahead. Yeah, he had Lou Ferrigno. He was like 5'11". <laughs> so he, um, but Thor is strange because Thor actually looks the part. He looks like the character in the book. It doesn't look that different. He walks around, he sounds annoying, and he's got the accent, and <laughs> it's a fantastical world, and the story was good, and it was like, I think they tried to like base it off of Macbeth, and it was like mm -hmm. smart. The love interest was whatever, but you know, I thought there was like a simple again. They they were really Marvel is so much better at DC, than DC at this of making yeah. these very simple, clean stories where they have to do one strong thing to show their hero. They kiss the girl, they save the universe, and everybody cheers. Aside from the Batman movies, which were awesome. Yeah, but those <clears> are well, different. Yeah. Again, those are not. But those are not. Those are not popcorn movies. Those are like straight up films. Same thing with Wonder Woman. That is not popcorn. It was like right. a film. Yeah, like I think, I think G Nice is talking season. about like like the current incarnation of like them trying to have their own expanded universe and stuff. I think that's what yeah. he's talking about. Right. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, go ahead. All right. What, okay, what, so did you guys just agree with me? What just happened? Yeah, Thor, no. Thor's straight. I mean, I would have picked something different. Well, we kind of covered it, but I would have picked something different. But Thor's straight. I mean, I like Thor part in part because he's not my favorite, and it was still a really good movie. <laughs> okay, I thought they did a really good job with that movie. I personally would have gone like Deadpool or Guardians of the Galaxy. That's just me. All right, you're go ahead. You're through some. Okay. Yeah, you're putting through too many. You're just saying it. So it's like, okay. They're, they're, I didn't claim them. They're still up for grabs if you want it. <laughs> you just burned them. But okay. Why don't you keep All right, KG, out? go ahead. Right. What you got? You're last. Yeah. Third and last. I'm salty Everyone because you burned it. through my third. I did one. not. Go ahead and That's claim it. I was going to say Deadpool. Which is Deadpool, yeah. Because okay. God, let's, let's, me, let's talk Deadpool, damn it. it was, uh, the great thing about Deadpool for me it was. Guy went to school and produced it. You know, I'm very proud of his his work. Go ahead, Deadpool. But, but it was a comedy, and it you know you, you we've seen from the heaviness of the Dark Knight films all the way through the the new Marvel universe, which was edgy, grounded, realistic, but funny, but still serious. <laughs> look, at that, went look at that! All the way left with this one. <laughs> I didn't. I think my ex expectations were not huge going into it, which always helps. But uh, you got T.J. Miller, who's hilarious on uh, Silicon Valley, and just irreverent R-rated comedy. They totally went for it, and it paid off. And not only that, not only did they go for it, but because it had so much success as R-rated comedy, I think like the highest grossing R-rated comedy of all time, you know, not just for inflation, <clears throat> they these kind of spawned like. All, I mean, not superhero R-rated comedies, although they're they are working on Deadpool too. It spawned like this excess this glut of like R-rated comedies, which are now bombing at the box office, like The House, like um, uh, Rough Night. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what how Girl Strip does because that, that's not like the same vein, and neither is Rough Night really. But it mm -hmm. almost seemed like it gave Hollywood permission to go for to really go for a hard R-rated comedy, and they're not all Deadpool. I don't know. And they released this shit like February, which is, you know, a bit of a dumping ground cinematically or whatever, and it just crushed. Crushed. Mm -hmm. Deadpool was fantastic. Deadpool was really, really good. And his character is that way. He, you know, what's funny about this is this is what people have being introduced to Deadpool is, but this was not, was not what he started off. He started off as just like a straight assassin. I, I, love, I love how we have the comic book maester in our presence. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. 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 To break down the yeah, Let me teach Preach. you. He, <laughs> start up is like a, like he was created by one of the most hated people in comics. And he was created as this sort of badass assassin who had a ton of guns and pouches. His big thing was he had a bunch of pouches. <laughs> pouches. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. And somewhere along the way, after they fired the guy, there's this developed thing where they have, He's become this funny guy. There's a, in the comic, he's sort of schizophrenic. He has like multiple voices in his head. 
So in the comic, when he talks, he's talking to like six different voices and they all talk back to him. And it sort of became this whole funny thing where it's sort of tongue in cheek and he breaks the fourth wall a lot and he fucks around. And they didn't give him that in this movie, but this is what, this is what the world knows him as. is this guy who talks a bunch of shit and he's sort of good, sort of bad. It's kind of, it, that, this movie was incredibly satisfying and Ryan Reynolds was perfect for it. Yes. yes. <clears throat> I agree he would have been perfect way back when he was apparently cast for Flash and oh. Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon was wrote and directed it, uh-huh. and it would have been glorious. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I heard. I mean, is it true? And you might know better about this. W, uh, WBW uh, didn't like Ryan Reynolds do some sort of like test footage or something for Deadpool, like to really help get it made or something? Is that? Well, I had heard that it was that it had been a pet project of his for a long time, and he. I don't know if it was him investing his money to do this test screen or what it was, but I know that. It had been a pet project for his for a while, and there was the controversy because he had played Green Lantern in the, in the DC universe. That was like, <laughs> and this terrible. one actor portrayed two heroes in two different universes, and blah blah blah. blah, awesome. blah. Oh, no, no, no! Can this one actor portray get another shot at being a hero after so butchering uh, another hero? Although it's he was in Blade. He was in Blade like, before all that. He was in Blade. No one remembers Blade. No one counts Blade as like real Marvel. He was a hero in Blade. I'm just saying. I'm surprised you didn't pull that one out, G-Nice. Because it wasn't that good. <laughs> that hasn't stopped you before. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Yeah. All right, so my, my third and last one, I mean, you are, you, y'all already know it's going to be, and I saved it for last because I knew no one picked it. No one's seen it yet. It is Spider-Man. And I'm going to you know, clear up the lane, Dan. I'm, I'm going to wax on I about like, it. I feel like this whole podcast was set up for this moment. <laughs> and, and it's nice of you to step in and ruin it. <laughs> no, but, but You're welcome. this thing is it it is a joy. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. But no, but seriously, really <laughs> it's it's fun, it's young, it's current. Like this dude, I mean, he's a 15-year-old kid from Queens. He's texting all the time, he's going to bodegas. Their 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 high school looks like a, a magnet school in in the uh, you know, in Queens, you know, a lot of Asians, you know, some black folk. I mean, you know, he, he's the minority for crying out loud. His best friend's Native American. I mean, it's just, I mean, and I'm not even so sure that these are like That's cynical choices. I mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even saying they, they did it cynically. I think they did it more accurately. You're not going to have a bunch of white people running around in Queens. You're, I mean, at least not, not all sexually. I mean, Peter Parker is a working class hero. And it's very much about like being the man on the ground, being your neighborhood friendly Spider Man. They say that line like two times in the movie. I, I like I got the first time, uh, but no, it's just really it's really adorable. And there's so many like cool you know analogies to like you know puberty and growing up and and, and dating, kissing the girl and stuff. And it's just it's just really really well done. I don't, I mean I'd never really heard of Tom Holland before this. I know he'd done some stuff. He kind of had a familiar fish face, but I was and I was a little disappointed. Like I said, that Donald Glover didn't get. It, although I clearly see the direction they're going this time, and it totally worked. Their casting was perfect. He's great. Whole thing's great. I really enjoy the hell out of it. I mean, yeah, look, look at this cast. Look at this cast. I mean, this is great. This is this is like and she's so funny. She. <laughs> it's yeah. just really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Very diverse cast. The Indian kid looks familiar. What was he in? Oh, anyone... uh, good question. I, I want to Jacob Badlin. I want to say I don't know where he's from, but he, he has he has that have that familiar looking face though. That's and they the all... big kid. That's the chubby kid. Yeah, well, actually, no. I, the true Don Quixote. He's only been like five things, three things. No one's really seen him. No, go up. I think this is the you clicked on the. Oh, 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 the oh, the Indian. Oh, sorry, the the East Indian kid. This guy. Sorry, I, was, I thought he was American strong. Indian. No, he's oh. been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, Tony right. Revol, Revol Vori or whatever. And, and so, and also, I was listening to the the Watch podcast earlier today, uh, and uh, they they talked about Spider Man Homecoming a little bit, and they talked about like how even like you know the the bullies in this in this movie are so realistic because like. So this guy kind of plays a bully. He's like, you know, a bit of a rich dipshit. But uh, I know, right? Exactly. You look like a bully, right? He plays a bit of a rich dipshit. But you know, you've got class with him. He can't totally bully you all the time. Like, you know, you've got some right. common points of connection. You know, they're both on like with the, the academic decathlon team, or whatever. So yeah, what, and even the hot girls, like, she's hot, but she's nice. She's not like me, you know. It's just it just felt re- like I mean, as much as like a superhero movie could be, it felt like a realistic-ish depiction 
of 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 high school intermixed in this like totally fantastical world where like there's like alien technology and like you know it's web slinging and shit like that. It felt like it, it felt like kind of like a Ferris Bueller-ish at times coming of age story. You know, I, I really enjoyed it. I truly enjoyed. It. You're gonna love the hell out of it. It's great. It's great. I I trust you. Okay. All right. Be nice. Good. Bring us home. <laughs> okay. The last one is my pick is the Daredevil series. Oh, okay. On Netflix, on Netflix that's not a movie, but okay. Uh, it's awesome. It's, we're going. We're going. We're, 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 we're doing uh, it. Fine. I enjoy it. it. Go. Explain. We, we, don't, we, don't have any, we don't have any studio sponsors or anything yet, so I don't think anyone will care. Okay, here we go. Go ahead. Explain it's, the Daredevil series. Go. It was good. It was exactly what you want. It was different from the movies in the sense that it was, it was ground dark. level, right? So it's like darker. It's smaller. It's what do they call it, street level stuff. But it was like one of the. They did a good job. They developed these characters. Foggy was, and all the characters are a little different. The but chemistry were, between him and uh, Froggy was great. The chemistry between him and Froggy is great. Is great. <laughs> Froggy. <laughs> the, Froggy. Yeah. And the Karen Page is still an interesting. She's not like that at all in the comics. So it was kind of interesting. Um, but I didn't hate it. And I thought Listen. he did a really good job. I thought, what's his name? Charlie, Charlie Cox. Cox. <clears throat> I mean, he his really accent kind of slips here and there. but it's Yeah, like... it sure does. But he, <laughs> but he like, it, it was good. And Wilson Fisk, again, he's not like that in the comic. But, but it was a cool a, he, take. He chewed up every scene. He was yes, he, did. He, did. He, he had to love it. I don't know why he chose. <laughs> A1 <laughs> steak sauce it. <laughs> it was, but he was very good. He was very, very good. I thought, I thought. I mean, that was exciting front to back. All 12 mm -hmm. were like solid. And Rosario Dawson has... And been, I was about to say, <laughs> it wouldn't be a tripod without a mention of... <laughs> Sorry, Dawson. Sorry, Dawson. We put her, hey, hey, Ed, can you put a picture of her in the background and we could just have her... <laughs> <laughs> she was, what I could do. She yeah. was. She, first of all, in this, she was perfect in this one because she was in there. She sprinkled in. She was a character. She's, she's, she's the connective there. tissue. She's the Sam Jackson of the Netflix. Yes, but now they're pushing it like they're pushing yeah. it in Iron Fist to the point where it's stupid. <laughs> but this was perfect because this was like this was this was exactly what you wanted to be. You're going into season two. Well, I'm just going with the pictures going, but yes, I guess I'm going to season two. Yes, I mean season two was also Electra was great. No, and Punisher was great. Yeah, Punisher he was, was he's getting his own series. He was that great. Oh, oh yeah, and actually, quick, quick, oh, quick cultural cul-de-sac. John Bernthal. If y'all didn't hear the the podcast last week, you probably didn't. Jay Devlin got on and let loose on John Bernthal. For what? <laughs> oh my god, it's awesome. So so I guess Jay Devlin's playing in like a men's league in Santa Monica or something, <clears throat> and he just dropped 40 on John Bernthal. For some reason, John Bernthal <laughs> playing this men's league. And they're at the free throw line, like two minutes left in the game, whatever. And John Bernthal says some very unkindly things about his mother. And <laughs> so ever since then, he's like, fuck John Bernthal. Because John Bernthal was on some call sheets this week because he's in Baby Driver. And last mm -hmm. week, and so he's like, fuck bon John Bernthal. I don't want him to prosper. You know, fuck him. Blah, blah, blah. You know, how wow. can you say about such a nice woman? So he's got beef with John Bernthal. <laughs> there you go. But I mean, what I mean, I was like, so I mean, but what do you think was gonna happen? Like, you know, you're six seven, and you can shoot up to like thirty feet. He's probably what five nine. No, no, he's like six feet, six one. You know, but still, still I, you know, you JJ Devlin played professional basketball. He lit his ass up, and John Bernthal, I guess his little ego, his little actor ego, couldn't take it. So that's my quick aside on John. Yeah, Berthold. I'm fairly certain John Bernthal slept fine that night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, no, the Daredevil series though is great. I, I concur. Um, I, I think I liked the second season better than most people. I thought it was fine. Um, yeah, I thought the first season was good. It was great. Yeah. I mean, like, they have to brag. So I do think some of these things, they don't have enough material to pull 12 issues. Yeah. Because I feel like you could do seven or eight with this. Like, they keep pushing the hand. I don't care about the hand. The hand are bad ninjas that come out of the woodworks. Okay, fine. Well, Iron Fist should have been stopped at like ten tops, and and, and, and no, sir. And to be honest with you, though, I, I think that Netflix is learning from its mistakes. Like, I'm not, I can't say how many like episodes are gonna be in the Defenders, whatever. But in, if they go for a second round of like all these, you know, like I, I guess they are going to second round Luke Cage, some other shows. But when they do a second round of these, I think they might cap them at ten because they see they can do good work in ten hour longs. You really can't. No, they're gonna do twelve. Like, they're definitely gonna be twelve for Daredevil. Uh, and I, I, they, I'm curious what they're gonna do for Jessica Jones. 
I mean, Daredevil was far and away. Oh, the best God, they're doing 13. Yeah, they're doing 13 for Daredevil. Daredevil was Daredevil was far and away the best of them, best of all of them. Jessica That's Jones was okay. I wonder how they're going to do for Luke Cage. I mean, I, I could watch like a million of Luke Cage, but I mean, <clears> still, I don't. 12. What's that? I'm sure they'll do, they'll do 12. They probably will. What they don't need to do is a second season of Iron Fist, and they do do a second season yeah. of Iron Fist, and be like six. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think unless they're just being obnoxious, they have to know that they need to address that. But the thing is, Marvel has so much power with them now because they're getting so much. You, would, you think they would have enough sway to say, if we want to do 12, we're going to do 12. Well, then they would say, if they have that much power, they should also have brain cells that go, we got to make it better. <laughs> I didn't see it. Never will see it. Willingly, it is strangely bad. What is Iron Fist? Oh, Iron Fist. Oh, yeah, no, it's 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 bad. It's it's bad. Do you guys, do you guys <laughs> think the Dark Tower? Are you guys interested in the Dark Tower? I'm a little interested. So I wasn't interested at all until I saw the second trailer, and the second trailer, which tells like the, what the story's fucking about. I'm now more interested. I'm very. I'm also interested. I, I might have forced myself to see it before seeing the second trailer because it's Idris. I'm curious to see how he does like a true, true lead on like something that's like fantasy like this. But I that second the the, the second um let me get off the screen. The the second trailer really did sell it for me because now I know what the story's about because I didn't read something like that and so now I know what it's about. I'm like okay, I'm intrigued. I want to see this. It oh they're awake. I thought that was uh, my household, but I just... should, should I mute your mic, G Nice? Yes, I mute yourself, G Nice. Oh, for crying out loud! All right, hold on. Let me, let me find a way to mute. Literally, good lord! Woo! You're not helping out, none, G Nice. Right, here we go. There we go. We we muted his mic. Good lord! All right. So, literally, <laughs> literally for crying out loud. You know, Lily for crying out loud. All right, so let's clap it up for ourselves. For surviving G Nice's uh uh young children. Hey, what's up, Ferris? What's up, uh what's up, Webby? What's up, what's up Abercrombie? Time? Wanna be your agent? Kids gonna make so funny. <laughs> so adorable. All right, so yes, so those are our three. Um and basically, so the heart of well, that was the heart of the, the show, but the meat of the show. You saw the sizzle now, see the steak. What is Cinema Draft? It is the fancy sports version of the movies. Instead of drafting athletes from teams, you're drafting actors from movies and how their movies perform at the North American box office will earn you points for your call sheet. Actors while competing against others for fun and prizes. You draft 10 actors, we're assigned a dollar value salary. You have a 100K budget to try and draft all 10 actors, no more, no less. Headliners are worth 40% more. There are two per film. Okay, there we go. So is he back? He's back. I don't I don't know if he's back or not. I'm just Oh okay, you're just saying yeah, I know I'm yeah. muted. He does be muted. Can we turn him on? Are you back? <laughs> no, he's still going. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you handle that G nice. Um and, and text us when you're back, when you're ready. All right. See, oh, so actually, so we're not didn't let me turn his there we go. <laughs> I guess I forced his camera. My bad. <laughs> Good thing he wasn't there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Technical gas galore. I'm sure the podcast listeners are loving this. Anyways, so for example, headliners points are worth 40% more. So on Suicide Squad, if it earns $100 million in a weekend at one point per million per actor, Margot Robbie would get 100 points, while Will Smith would get 140. It is free to play with over $200 in prizes a week plus a $25 bonus to the highest scoring call sheet. Beta testing is open and live. Games will start on Thursday at, 6, or at 10 p.m. Pacific time. And we're about to jump into the shot list. But, and I was hoping G-Nice would be here for this. Hopefully we'll get a chance to see this. Um, I wanted to debut. <laughs> if I can ooh, actually, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if this will work. I hope this, this works. Um, uh, let's see if this works. I wanted to, I wanted to debut the 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 video. We have an investor video uh, that we use to sh show off the prospects of Cinema Draft as a game and a business and how it fits into the movie industry. And I enjoyed I enjoyed making it. It's a lot of fun. Hopefully you guys can hear it and see it. Uh, gosh. Okay. I guess we'll try. I guess I'll turn the volume all the way. Maybe it will work. Um, so we're going to. Line it up. <clears throat> Is that? Oh, that's actually. Hold on a second. Let me go to. So, so while I'm searching for this, 
basically or, uh, any actors or movies you're looking out for this weekend KG uh, well definitely obviously uh Spider-Man will have some staying power obviously right. but, but there's also the big planet of the apes I believe uh coming out this week which should make some money so it'll be interesting to see I may I may do a comp more platter of the, the cheaper of both of those, depending on what the predictions are at the uh, box office, how close they are, or whatever. Then there's that what's that what's that Wish Upon or something movie? Yeah, yeah, like that teen Which, horror movie with like uh, Ryan Phillippe and some stuff. Yeah, and it's uh, I forgot it's it's limited or platform, but it, it's it's in a lot of theaters. It seems like for whatever for its it's in a small. It's not wide release, but it's in a lot of theaters. Yeah, that, that's my guess. I'm guessing 1800. It might still go wide. I think it'd be a mistake if I was. Actually, I mentioned this in the group chat. They held the group chat. Oh, is G Nice is back? I think G Nice is back. Um, oh, no, that's you. Okay. Uh, I mentioned in the group chat that um, that uh, it if it's smart, it'll stay in that 1800 screen lane, not just for purposes of our game, although that'd be kind of cool, but because when these core films open, and they do well the first, you know, two, three weekends, uh, first three weekends tops, but uh, they tend to overextend themselves or too wide. I mean, and they're going against Behemoth and Spider-Man and all the other summer movies. I think they'd be smart if they're 1800 or less. So we'll see what it shakes out. I guess we'll get a better idea, I think, tomorrow. Also mentioned in the group chat uh, was that... Um, was that they get their theaters, the theater or the the movies get matched with the theaters like late Tuesday night. So we should have a better idea, if not on Box Office Mojo, just generally in the zeitgeist, we should start hearing about some theater counts and I'll update them as I can in Z Game. All right, so, uh, so I'm, I'm share, I'm gonna see if we can try sharing. Let's see if we can unmute G-Nice, see, uh, see if he's back yet. Can I unmute him? Oh, there we go. Uh, I did hide. Oh, okay, I guess I got to go to the soundboard and fix him. It's fixed you nice. Are you back? He's back. There you go. All right, I want, I want you to see this, G-Nice. This is, this is our investor video. Are you there? I guess hello, he's... Hello, wow. Yes. G oh, man. All right. Anyways, well, he'll come in. I'm sure you'll say something snarky in the middle of it. Screw him. <laughs> We're going to have some fun with this. I'm going to show the investor video. I will take no feedback. It is awesome. Cinema draft. Play the stars. Be your own star. 
<laughs> nice. I don't care what anyone nice. says. Let's unmute you nice and curious what to say. Did you, did you, uh, is he back? He's still not back, is he? Where That's did right. you get all the, the footage, like, uh, the guy walking? Great job, by the way. <laughs> Kudos to Luigi Bellaro, uh, the director I hired. Used to work with him over okay. at my previous job. But yes, um, he he came to. Me, so I had this idea of what we need to get done for for the investor video, <clears throat> and he came back with an idea like, well, maybe we can use this thing called 2.5D. And he sent me like YouTube link and you know where they take a lot of those photos and just kind of like zoom, it, do you know do camera tricks to make it feel like it's moving and stuff, okay. <clears throat> and. That was that was just smart. I, I loved it. And I just kind of came up with a script that I felt kind of worked and w rolled with it. Nice, nice, nice. Thanks, so sir. Yeah, so be rolling in. Um, yeah, it was cool. I like. I was. I was wondering how you got some of those shots in there, like the exterior theater shots, and then like the. Oh yeah, he, he filmed some stuff. Like some stuff, he okay. just filmed. Like <clears throat> you know, like anything that had like. Oh my god! Uh, hello. My yeah, God. I'm back. Oh my God! Yes, you are back, and you just alienated all of our podcast listeners. <laughs> yeah, what just happened? Oh, you came back like thunder. It was crazy, yeah. and you missed you missed the debut of my uh, of my investor video uh, for Cinema Draft. We'll, we'll play it after the after the podcast over. It's a lot of fun. Uh, anyway, but yeah, and uh, as I was saying, so he, the whole 2.5D thing I thought was pretty cool. So we went with that, and it's just you know, and, and hopefully the investors will come rolling in. We definitely need some help. Definitely need to get that seed round so we can build the site up into what we know it can be. That's right. Play, play the stars. Be your own star. <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, more, so. more competitive out there. Man, That's really. Yeah. Uh, don't it? And I, it was fun also to go back to like my voiceover roots. I've had exactly one paying voiceover job, and I got into argument with my manager. Never worked in that industry again. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> Sweet. And that, and that is the way you do voiceover work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. So let me share my screen. We're gonna go into the A list or the shot list, and these are views you can use to pick the winning Cinema Draft call sheet. Now that we've seen all that promo material and all that good stuff. So first one on the A-list, of course, going to be Andy Serkis, 24,000, War for the Planet of the Apes. I am ready. My body is ready for this movie. I'm excited. It is the official post-lock, Cinema Draft post-lock movie of the week. Don't mess around. Don't overthink it. Just pick it. Now, to be honest with you, though, it's, it's going to be tied up at the top. I mean, uh, if you're doing a Stars and Scrubs construction, like I'm sure most people will this weekend, you're tempted to either stack two War for the Planet of the Apes, which wouldn't be a bad thing. I think it's tracking or trending now towards $67 million, possibly. But there's something to be said for your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Tom Holland, 23500 Spider-Man Homecoming in its second week. Now, it did a boffo. $117 million opening last weekend, around the lines we predicted. Even if it loses 50%, you're still looking at 58.5 million. It's, it's actually priced almost about the same as War for the Planet of the Apes, and for a reason. I mean, it, it could be a coin flip this weekend, only because the reviews for, for Spider-Man Homecoming, the cinema score, everything about Spider-Man Homecoming is huge, huge, and everyone's really excited about it. So it, it actually could give War for the Planet of the Apes a run for its money. It could, I wouldn't be surprised if it did another 65, 70 million this weekend, Spider-Man Homecoming. So it's a bit of a coin flip. You can either get two cheaper actors in Spider-Man Homecoming as headliners, or you can mix and match one headliner from Spider-Man, one headliner from War for the Planet of the Apes. I don't know. I mean, I, it's it's still early. I usually kind of come up with, with a, a plan. Oh, I don't know, about 6.30 p.m. on Thursday. So we'll see how it shakes out. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh, co-starring. Now, these are some values you may want to look out for this weekend. The Big Sick. The Big, big Sick. Fan. Yes, this sucker. This this joint has been going like crazy, like gangbusters. It did almost eleven thousand per screen last weekend on three hundred twenty six screens, and now it's threatening to go wide. It's rumored to be on twenty five hundred screens. I don't know, man. I don't know. It, actually, eleven thousand. Now I think about it, it might be kind of high. But if this thing even does, let's say it does what six thousand on twenty five hundred screens. You're looking at 15 million. I mean, it's it's in play. 
uh, Zoe Kazan and mm. Kamal Nanjiani, uh, the two headliners, both are in play, if you ask me. I, I don't know. What do, you, do you think you might find some room on your call sheet for this, uh, KG? Yeah, I'll probably take a shot at it, uh, you know, depending. If, it, if it's wide, obviously it's, it's less of a – it's less of a win for you, but um, the reviews have been great, like you said, and the momentum for the film is is still there. That it might still be a good value, like you said. Uh, Eleven nine is high, but uh, I might try to squeeze one in, squeeze one of those two in. And the more I think about it, I mean, there, I don't know. It, it, I mean, there could be a construction out there where you have like War for the Planet of the Apes, and then you just get like super creative and get like. You know, some big six, some, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, maybe like a lesser Spider-Man. I don't know. I, I, it, it'll be very interesting to see what people come up with. Uh, last week, it seemed like there was like a prevailing uh, uh, stream of thought where you'd have Tom Holland from Spider-Man, then you'd have... Uh, then you'd have like uh, what was it? Not the, <coughs> then you had like a lot of big sick. Like most people mm-hmm. had a five pack. It was the the one guy who dared do a six pack and then just punted the rest of his call sheet. Gamble twenty four seven, our uh, returning champion of the feature presentation. It was it was that one guy who was able to to squeeze that off when big sick was still a platform release. We are interested to see what the projections are now that it is uh, projected to be a wide release. Uh, also, mm-hmm. wish upon another wild card. Uh, if it opens in limited release. At this price point, I mean, I, it might be hard to pass up. Eighty-five hundred for Ryan Philippi as one of your headliners. Joey King, the other headliner, eighty-six hundred. Uh, I'm guesstimating it'll be on eighteen hundred screens, limited release. If so, this is the only limited release you want if you can afford it. It'll once again, these constructions are going to be be very interesting, somewhat creative this week because I don't think there's one prevailing school of thought that you have to stack war for the plan of the apes or you have to headliner stack spider-man there'll be some mixing and matching there'll be some out tray different uh constructions uh, i think the most daring construction we saw this past week ring balls 22s yeah he totally just bypassed spider-man and went with a, a max stack a full eight including the headliner stack uh, for the big sick, and he 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 was about sixty points off, but I, I love the creativity. So keep it up, everybody. Keep it up. Uh, cutting room floor. Skip these losers. <laughs> I saw John Bernthal go by. I'm like, ooh, John Bernthal. <laughs> <No. laughs> I'm with you, Jay Devlin. I'll see you at the poker table tomorrow night, my boy. All right, he's coming to Vegas. Let's do it. Uh, Cars three. Yes, this movie is probably not going to dip below wide, which is sad because it is too wide for its own good. Audiences have fairly much, I wouldn't say passed it by, but it did not catch on with audiences like most Pixar films do. It's still going to be too wide for its own good. And then also Pirates, which kind of had a pulse the last few weeks, but now the patient is dead. Unless the sucker slips in under uh, un- under the limited threshold into platform, I wouldn't mess with it. It's min price for a reason. Starting at 5000 going up to 7000 for Johnny Depp as your super headliner. Okay. G Nice, are you playing this week? Yeah. My plan is to play every week. And then right step answer. Step. And then stuff <laughs> happens. Right answer. <laughs> well have you bought have you bought your share of cinema draft yet? <laughs> like, yes. I just haven't filled out the paperwork. That is a lie. <laughs> Everyone go to wefunder.com slash cinema draft for as little as a hundred dollars. You can be a profit participant in the future of entertainment. I will say this, Gene Nice, as far as playing the game. The, the new uh, talent pools are up early in the week, and you can always just throw something together early in the week and then switch it up later on. I like to not to give away my strategy because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been winning much lately anyway. But <laughs> there's only 10 spots on the um, background talent. Yes. So I like to grab a spot early on there, and then at least I have a spot, then I can adjust the call sheet later if I look at different information or whatever, or if I have time. If I don't, at least I have Tuesday night is already half full. Look at that. It's already half full on Tuesday night. Look at it go. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, great turnout last week, 80% full. Let's fill these suckers up. The sooner we can fill these up, the more we can expand the prize pool. Ooh, yes, yes. Okay, so let me... Stop sharing this. All right. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So uh, our over-under this week is War for the Planet of the Apes. 
The over-under will be $65 million. I'm going to post the poll on our play at Play Cinema Draft Twitter account. Uh, results from the last poll, which was $100 million on Despicable Me 3. I think it was actually two weeks ago because uh, I did a Just the Shot podcast last week. And basically, 54% uh, picked the over and I couldn't, you know, and we weren't even close. It did 72 million over three days, 99 million over five day, 4th of July weekend. Wrong, <laughs> wrong. But, uh, and actually, I, I intend to see Despicable Me 3 at some point because I love Agnes. She's wonderful. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so over under this week, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, 65 million. Over under, G Nice. Over. Over sixty-five million. Okay, that's yeah, that, movie, that movie's fine. It just looks simple. You don't have to. There's an angry gorilla, and he's gonna beat the shit out of some people. And then he's gonna find, And then at the end, right before he rips somebody's throat out, he's gonna go, "Oh, we're all the same." And then they're gonna decide to call a truce, and there'll be like a sunset. And then, <laughs> <laughs> did you see Rise for the of the Planet of the Apes or whatever the last one was? The second one, the, the dude who plays Gollum and the ape. Yeah. Like yeah. like like uh, Caesar or whatever. that yeah, one. I mean, look, that was an excellent movie. Don't I mean you can't. Yeah, it's excellent. Oh, excellent was bold. It was a good, very good movie. It's fun. These movies are fun. Uh, no, there's like social. There's like I mean they are fun. There's like social commentary in there. I, I don't know. I thought it was really good. I thought it was yeah, really ah, so deep sure. for its genre. But whatever. What, what do I know? Uh, do, do you like the, the 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 plan the the new reboot post Marky Mark series? Uh, KG. I did. I thought it was. Uh, I think it came on HBO or something. Very entertaining. It's surprisingly watchable. I, you know, yeah. I think this one, if it holds to form, will do well as well. And I'm I'm going to say under sixty five, just because there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, bodies out there in the in the water. So Spider Man, Spider Man. Yep. <clears throat> it's oh, wait, that's that's wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I forgot about Spider Man. That, too late, that. you're over. <laughs> I'll be over. <laughs> and, can I just say the best movie about monkeys is still Project X? That was that was all right. That's a great movie. <sighs> okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going to bring this in for a landing on that awkward moment. Uh, <laughs> where can you find some <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry you guys can't handle the truth. I'm trying to be here for you. <laughs> I can only walk you to the steps. <laughs> Where can you find Cinema Draft? You go to cinemadraft.co, sign up uh, to access the free beta. We're on all your social medias, all your social medias, like the Khaleesi's and them dragons, uh, including our corporate blog at medium.com slash at cinemadraft. Hell, we even have a Pinterest. Come go check out our Pinterest repin one of our pins or whatever they do on Pinterest. Uh, also subscribe to this podcast at iTunes, Google Music, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcasting outlet. We are live once again with over $200 of prizes this weekend. Uh, make sure you sign up and play. It is always free to play. Also, the, the feature presentation and our other four other contests have their theater count lock at 6 p.m. Thursday. That means that whatever theater count we have and release type we have for that movie at that time will be locked in for the duration of the weekend and the game. Uh, the game then starts at 10 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, $46 the first of the feature presentation. $25 bonus to the call sheet of the week. And, and for that, you must have the highest scoring call sheet and also beat my call sheet. Results are generally Monday evening if we are not hand scoring <laughs> yes, no hand scoring this week, please. All right, fellas, plug your ish. KG, go. Milk and Honey web series episode two is out now on your uh, on Issa Rae's uh, YouTube channel, and oh. we which uh, starring Lance Gross, Debbie Allen, Boris Kojo, Asha Kamali May, and a few others. And then, of course, we have Dynasty coming. This fall on the CW. Yeah, buddy. Is that your promo voice? Do that again. Do that again. You can do that better. Is that my what voice? Your promo voice. That's not my voice. <laughs> you promo. sounded drunk, darling. <laughs> I sounded what? I sounded what? Drunk. <laughs> Inebriated. <laughs> oh, I don't you know. I don't have a good voice, so <laughs> watch the show. All that hey, what do you, do you have anything to plug? Are you putting yourself out there, G I do not. I do that. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. Well, thanks for, for listening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. The Tripod coming at you hopefully once a month. Uh, it's good stuff. 
Thank you, guys. Thanks to my esteemed guests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job, Greg, guys. <laughs> Kevin Garnett, the, w, the, the WBW, or Working Black Ryan Hollywood, Chuck Picardo, and G Nice, the Molder of Young Minds. Oh, God. That's a sad. Yeah, it's like a Johnny Carson kind of feel. <laughs> the Molder of Young Minds, that's right. And between now and the next time, everybody who's listening or watching or both, go see a go movie, see or, movie something. or something.